Welcome back, everybody, to Pop Pop, the Pop Culture Podcast. I am the LA nerd, Joel Reeves, and I just opened a Lagunitas IPA. Mm. With me, as always, is Taylor Salen. Hey, yo. How's it going, everybody? And Lauren Sperling. Hi, friends. Um, I'm fully vaccinated, and I got to see Taylor yeah. in person last week, and it was glorious. It was great. Jellies. I know. I only we did a lot of things. We... Longer. We drank a lot of beer. We smoked a lot of weed. We <laughs> ate a lot of we ate a lot of red vines and in and out. It mm. was uh, oh, it was fun times. It was just like the old times. <laughs> Seriously, man, it was like crazy, <laughs> dude. It was like being back transported back to uh, what 2016, 2015, 2016. Yeah, man, it was wild. I woke up face down on his couch, like in the middle of the night, like oh, what uh, what happened? <laughs> You're like uh. And he was like, "Go, go to the spare room. You, you have a bed. Go to bed. <laughs> go to bed, young child." <laughs> Thanks. It was Dad. glorious, and we yeah. shall do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Taylor, before we get into the episode, you know what you got to do. Roll me those sweet, smooth jams. Wooka wooka. Like that one was too high pitched, but whatever. No, I'm always like critical always... of my Wookas. You well, are, and yourself. they're always great. Okay, well, good. I'm glad. I'm just trying to make the no best. No one else has. No one else has done them, so it's like who, have who, who, who confident Wookas. Oh no, I have confident Wookas. I just, you know, I want to do the best I can do. I want to make the best. I have I, confident Wookas. Yeah. <laughs> confident Wookies. <laughs> Wookie Wookies. If there's any pull quote for this podcast, <laughs> I've got confident Wookas, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Could be one of them. Just trying to hone my craft, Joel. That's all. Uh, it's look. It's, it's pretty pro. Honed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. I mean, after five years, it probably should be. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Um, a lot of us uh, have kind of watched the same shit for what mm-hmm. we've been watching, so mm-hmm. this is going to be seamless and easy, and I won't hate it as much as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely right. Um, the reason that Taylor and I hung out was to watch Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> okay, look, I'm going to be honest with the listeners. Um, we hung out the week prior to Godzilla versus Kong because that's when we thought it was coming out. Because <laughs> if you had Googled it, it said the 25th. Mm-hmm. So we hung out on the 25th, and then it was like, ah, it's the 31st. Um, yeah. But we did finally end up watching it, and indeed. Lauren also watched it. Yeah. I did. I did indeed. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Just threw it in the chat. She's like, we weren't st- we we weren't gonna start with that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, you know, whatever it is, what it is. <laughs> we were gonna roll with the punches, you know. I was trying not to interrupt the episode, Joel, and yeah. call you out in front of everybody. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that's not what we talked about, would but it, this is where it, we are. Would it be this podcast? <laughs> if- uh... If, if I didn't, didn't call like, you out, ah, we fucked up. Yeah. That's true. Um, well, we could just use the ending to true. then transfer. I mean, like they work vice versa. It's fine. Yeah, that's um, we'll, we'll make it work. True. The magic of editing. Uh, Lauren, what did you think about Taylor and I can talk with each other? How did you feel about this movie? <laughs> um, I thought it was fun. I going into it, I had not seen any of the previous monster films of the franchise. Um, Which is honestly surprising to me, I'm going to be honest. I know. I I don't know. From the trailers, I never really, like, was super, super interested in it. And, like, no one ever was like, hey, let's go see it. Um, Fair. But, so I started it, and I got, like, ten minutes in, and I was like, you know what? I'm sure I could get through this movie, but, like, I kind of want more of the lore of of this world. Mm -hmm. Um, So then I went back and I watched... King Kong and Godzilla, King of Monsters, because I forgot that there was a Godzilla before that, but it did the job anyway. Yeah. Um, and I got invested in the world, and so I I had fun with Godzilla versus Kong when I went back to it, and I and I'm glad in the end that I did do that because there were some direct references and stuff to the previous films yeah. that made it 
all the better for knowing what they were talking about, you know? Yeah, yeah. Was it a perfect yeah, oh, movie? Absolutely. Nah. Was it a fun God, movie? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can see, yeah, you could say that about all of the MonsterVerse films. Exactly. Well, you know what? Actually, though, I don't know. Kong Skull Island. Uh, Col- blah, 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 Skull blah, blah, Island blah, blah, was pretty blah. good. Kong Skull Island was like a pretty good film, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, well, yeah. I think part of the reason why Kong Skull Island for me like stands out amongst the other MonsterVerse movies that have been released thus far is because like it's pretty self-aware as to what type of movie it wants to be and like doesn't take itself too seriously and like kind of plays with the tropes and conventions of the genre a little bit, but also like Mm -hmm. is earnestly like trying to tell a decent story. And I just feel like, you know, that's part of the reason for me why God, uh, not only Kong Skull Island, but you know, Godzilla versus Kong is so entertaining because it's just, you know, uh, it's very self-aware in terms of what it's trying to do and not being like uh, like a serious you know take on these uh, characters. Yeah, and totally. Monsters, so. And John C. Riley's in it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, anything with John C. Riley and Sam Jackson, like, come on now. You know what I mean? Like, the cast in that movie is kind oh, of the ridiculous. Cast is fucking like, stacked. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. It was. I think. I. I. I think that's my exact review of it so if we don't want to you know delve too deep into it it is like i had i i had fun to be fair i was like uh like uh moon level like stoned Um, (laughs) but i i just remember like like hitting taylor on the chest and being like dude we live in a world where fucking king kong is fighting godzilla and he was like no it's great yeah well, yeah, I will say like I was the opposite of that, and I still enjoyed it. So, <laughs> is the opposite of being stoned just just sober, or were Stone you like cold sober, super sober? I I was I was I was super so sober mm. because oh, wow. I need, I had to be yeah <laughs> <laughs> because I had to be. I mean that's copy that that's fair um <laughs> you know what i mean uh yeah no but even then like you know that like okay i don't want to go too like uh, spoiler into this movie obviously but fuck it y- fuck well it. so just... I- i'll just say that i think the screenplay is like absolutely like ludicrous and 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 terrible in a lot of ways and yeah <laughs> i mean i don't know if you guys felt this way but it's pretty apparent that this movie was like hacked to shit because they're like top build characters that have like three two or three lines in the movie like i think um fuck who's it lance reddick lance reddick is like one of the top build people in this movie and he's in like one scene you know what i mean oh really so it's and and, uh he plays um hold on let me see here i have to look it up uh it's been a minute what the hell (laughs) copy that he's Um, um gellerman Gellerman, yeah, something like that. I don't know. It doesn't say. I'm, I'm trying to look on Wikipedia, but it's look. This is how funny it is. He's like one of the top billed people in the movie, and he doesn't even have a character description on Wikipedia. Like, oh, here it is. Yeah, Gellerman. Okay. You're right. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, and uh, especially like Kyle Chandler, like makes like one fucking. He's in one scene in this movie. Like he just basically wandered onto set for like one day, and then was like, "Hey, I'm here. I'm gonna shoot a scene," you know. And so it's yeah. like there's, like, there's stop definitely listening to that garbage podcast. Yeah, there's definitely evidence that this movie <laughs> was longer in terms of all the human elements. And I think it's actually better off like not having any of that shit in the movie, because as we know, one of the biggest criticisms of these movies, and I think it's a valid criticism, is that the human stuff isn't really that compelling at the end of the day yeah you know what i mean on like, the flip side though there's just no way to do an entire movie without you know it's like oh yeah if there wasn't dialogue or story yeah. it would just be like rawr well, well of ooh, course of course ah, and, yeah ooh, rawr. And it's like eh. i mean to, to be fair that like they're like if this movie was just the segments of godzilla and kong fighting like it would be almost perfect in a lot of ways but yeah. it wouldn't make sense but it would still be amazing but and Jesus Christ, this fucking loud ass motorcycle outside. The point is, though, is I like obviously you have to have that human conduit to be able to develop, you know, progress the story. But I just think that, like, even like the previous, like, I think King of the Monsters is a great example of that, where it's like it tries to spend a little bit too much time developing like the human storylines. And like, yeah. at the end of the day, you just don't care. You know what I mean? 
Um, I actually cared more about Kong in this movie than I did like any of the main characters in King of the Monsters. So let's put it that way. Um, but nevertheless, like I think Adam Wingard does like a really, really good job of like basically making this a giant homage to like 80s action movies. Um, there are like yeah. tons and tons of references to like different uh, famous, you know, action characters, action beats, action movies from from the 80s. Like, you know, the most apparent one, that I think we talked about it when we talked about the trailer was the um, the John McClane reference when he's jumping off the ship. Uh, he yeah. basically takes the same pose as like <laughs> as, as he's jumping off the building and die hard. So like, yeah, you know, th- there's a lot of good stuff in there like that. But overall, I think I enjoyed the movie for what it was. I'm not trying to be too critical, uh, you know, of this movie. But at the same time, like it's also kind of batshit insane. Like, Joel, I'm sure you can speak to this, but the whole sort of uh, conspiracy element of this movie is pretty I... fucking wild. Like. Look, man, we all like they 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 really wanted like Mecha Godzilla to be like the big surprise in this movie. Which and for no me, the big surprised. surprise in this movie was the fact that like QAnon existed in this. It was like <laughs> it was like there's a fucking flat Earth, bro, and there's a fuck. It's like she listens to, like this conspiracy Hollow theory Earth. podcast, and I'm like, oh my god. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, not flat Earth. Hollow Earth. <laughs> flat Earth is real. Hollow Earth is fake. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I just yeah. was not expecting this really weird fucking conspiracy theory storyline to take place. Um, it was kind of one of the things that like took me out of the movie. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Like, just yeah. show the big monkey punch the big fucking lizard. Like, what, what are what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the well, whole trek into I mean, Hollow Earth and blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. Was quite strange. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's... like the fight with Mecha Godzilla, I think, could have been like a, like, a good substitute for like i mean i just not that i wanted more mecha godzilla but i thought it was just so odd that like the final battle was like the fight for hollow earth or what i don't know yeah. i was just yeah like, eh. well I, I see why they had to like they definitely lean heavy into it for sure and i like i don't necessarily like have so much of a problem with that because at the end of the day like what they had the, the whole point of all the hollow earth stuff to begin with is they need to give kong on, on on a practical level they need to give kong like a way to actually be able to fight godzilla because uh if he yeah. doesn't have the axe like he would be fucked up in like two like atomic breath you're dead fight over you know what i mean <laughs> like there's no compa- so like i see on a functional level like why they had to do it but you could have also spent like way less time on that you know what i mean and even yeah. more time on setting up the whole mega godzilla uh, angle or fucking Damien Bashir's character who I think literally shows up in the this, do they even set him up in the first act I can't even remember but I don't remember uh, that necessarily being the case like he just literally kind of popped up out of nowhere um, yeah but there's some really fucking weird trivia that I want to just run through with you guys on this too like <laughs> for instance like it. it's like that. It, this is just via the Wikipedia but it's like Skarsgård prepared for the film by researching the hollow earth, like as if it's a real thing, you know what I mean? Like just the way they put it here and learning sign language. But I just think it's funny that like Alexander Skarsgård is like, yeah, I'm just going to look into hollow earth, man. Like just going to go down that con- conspiracy rabbit hole, you know? <laughs> um, and then Julian Dennison, apparently um, he, they, they, he read with uh, Millie Bobby Brown in this movie when they did uh, the testing process they read scenes from Romeo and Juliet, which is like the what? weirdest <laughs> shit ever because there's not even, which I'm glad there's not like a love angle. What the fuck? In yeah. This. Um, but there's no lang- love angle whatsoever. So it's just kind of weird. Um, and so, yeah, I just, you know, there's just some, some really interesting trivia for this movie that I'm sure is going to end up coming out. But, um, yeah, that is very weird, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, Again, like the, the the cast here is actually really amazing. I mean, Brian Tyree Henry, Rebecca Hall, mm-hmm. who's like completely fucking wasted in this. Uh, uh, Brian Tyree Henry does really. I he look as much as I as much as I didn't like the conspiracy theory like element of the movie. Mm-hmm. He did. He did really he good did, in, yeah. in that role. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Well, I was great. entertained because it was him doing it. But like while it was happening, I was like, uh, I don't. I don't. I could do without this. <laughs> but at least at, at least I have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And and basically Brian Tyree Henry describes the character as a quote unquote crackpot, 
with a level of heart and loyalty. Oh, yeah. So I mean, that pretty much, yeah. you know, that sums up your assessment there, Joel. So it's like that. Well, was and very, like very all of like he was never, and like the best part is like he was never wrong. You know yeah. what I mean, like he, yeah. like he, yeah, knew a- a- everything. He just had to like prove it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. QAnon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did like how the axe looked like Stormbreaker, though. Yeah, right. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty good stuff. I was like, wait, are we getting a Thor crossover here? <laughs> right. right. I be, really was like, weird. how does how do physics work in the fucking hollow earth? And they just showed him like jump and then kind of like float and then just kind of like land on the other side. And I'm like, well, yeah, all right. I guess that's the obvious answer. Yeah. By the way, hollow earth like is a real concept. Oh, I, I, I know it is. Oh, uh, okay. Because you said flat Earth was real, hollow Earth wasn't, but. Well, no, I'm just, well, I mean, neither of them are real. That well, was the true. Is the, but I thought you meant like. I was pretending to be a flat Earther. Theories. No, no. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Sorry, I, mean, I didn't get the all joke. All the people who believe of like the deep state and the lizard people, like the lizard yeah. people come from the hollow Earth. Like, the that's, lizard like, the, people. That's the fucking. Oh, man. It's so dumb. Yeah. Um, Everyone knows that none of it's real, and we're all in the matrix. Yeah, um, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Hardcore so, reaction. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this movie. Yeah, we all no. saw it. I really enjoyed the battles. Obviously, um, some of the Mecha God Zazilla shit was actually, I kind of liked it. I Although it cool. I will say, um, it makes no fucking sense that like Ghidorah, like the whole Ghidorah angle, like that didn't work for me really like right they he, used the head to like yeah, which makes yeah. no sense because the head has been severed and like it's it I, it's stupid um <laughs> but whatever like i'm not gonna that just, didn't that didn't bother me as much as the hollow earth stuff i'm not gonna lie. yeah i mean no well, yeah. that's what i'm saying like but i'm also not gonna let it like i'm not gonna put too much weight into that you know for this movie so to speak so yeah. Well, speaking of consi- conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so QAnon um, was in this movie. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> there was a good documentary on HBO called Q Into the Storm. Um, before, Actually, really funny. B- b- before we talk about that, I think this HBO documentary put Vice to shame. And, and like they – so, like, Vice was going to do, like, a Q documentary just like this where it was, like, episodic. And they only did the first, and they only did the first episode, and then like no other fucking episode came out that I'm aware of because I was like waiting for episode two. Oh wow! Um, and I think it might be because this HBO documentary came out, and HBO, uh, like I don't know if they own Vice, but like all of Vice's content is on is on HBO. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there may have been a correlation there. Uh, but anyway um there's it's 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 been hotly debated on like who q in this QAnon is um so this documentary is not so much about like the things that these q people believe right it's not like let's dive into like comet ping pong and pedophilia and the deep yeah. state it's kind of like who the fuck like where the fuck did these idiots come from and who is the ringleader Who's clown two? of these fucking idiots yeah yeah um i feel comfortable saying that because i don't believe any QAnon supporters listen to this podcast because um, they would have because they would have quit a long time ago yeah. or um, made themselves known. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, I would have had an attempt on my life by now. <laughs> uh, or or a blue Q would have shown up in your apartment. Oh, shit. Is that what that is? <laughs> there is oh, one. God. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, <laughs> Taylor didn't watch it. Right. But like yeah, Lauren and I both saw it. Um, yeah. I'm going to say it's not a lot of new information that I didn't already know. Um, I'm pretty heavy into politics. So I kind of knew uh, the players of this game. Like I knew who Ron Watkins was. I like Mm. knew this whole like 4chan, 8chan, 8kun thing, like where uh, these message boards got, got, got started. Um, What is your background on the knowledge of Q? Uh, yeah, not, not a lot. Um, I mean, obviously aware of some of the, the theories that they have and how they've acted upon them. Um, and kind of the, the fact that it spread so far, so quickly, really. Um, and I'd heard of, you know, 4chan and 8chan before. I'd never have 8kun, 8kun, but, um, but 
I didn't know who most of these these players are because I'm not as big into politics and or the internet as you, as you are. So it's very true. Yeah. Um, I will say like the one thing that kind of took me up by surprise and that I didn't know is, um, and this will be a spoil. I mean, it's a documentary, but it is a spoiler. <laughs> um, well, one thing I didn't know was like at some point in the documentary, they're talking about how there was a, a poster on 8chan who was Q and then there was like a, they called it like a trip code, but it just sounded like a password. Mm -hmm. Um, There was like Q's account was very obviously compromised Mm -hmm. and a poster on the, on the HN boards was like, Hey, this isn't Q. He was the mod of the board. Right. He's like, this is someone else. And code monkey, who's a pretty popular person on the internet, um, at least on that, on that, corner of the internet mm-hmm. um was like no it's definitely q and like even though it very blatantly wasn't because the cadence was different like the writing style was different the things he was saying were kind of different mm-hmm. um he kind of pushed for like the narrative of this is q um and i had never heard that before yeah um which does lead me to believe the very i mean it's a long spanning documentary of like the creators of HN splitting up and having a fight, so on and so forth, like this legal battle over years and years and years. But the ending is like apparently like the discovery of Q and Ron mm-hmm. Watkins, who is this um, internet personality code monkey, um, yeah. kind of admits that he's Q on camera. Um, and like the whole time, he's like the whole series, he's like taunting this interviewer like, Like, you know, you'll never find out who Q is. And the interviewer was like, yeah, like, I get that. I'm just here to just kind of like document the process. Um, And then in the last episode, he's like talking to Code Monkey. And he says something along the lines of like, I've been doing this anonymously for years. And now I'm just doing it publicly. And then he was like, oh, but not as Q. And no shit. Like, the interviewer just like starts, he just starts laughing. Cause he's yeah. like, you like, I fucking, I fucking, <laughs> fucking got you, you idiot. Like, yeah. yeah. You just admitted it. That's um, funny. So I would go check it out. I think it's a lot of just, it's like a documentation process of, it goes up to even like modern day. We like, it talks yeah. about the insurrection, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. things like that. It's a lot of, um, <laughs> I, I would say if you don't understand incel culture, Watching this is going to give you a little bit uh, of a glimpse into that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Very uncomfortable. It yeah. is It is a pretty uncomfortable documentary to watch. I got to say, as someone who didn't know a lot about this whole thing and that whole cu- culture and that whole sector of the internet. Like, obviously, I knew, like, dark web existed and stuff, but I didn't know that, like, that's what 4chan <laughs> kind of was. Yeah. Um, so I, it is not for the faint of heart. I don't think personally, just fair warning. If you do watch it, mm-hmm. um, there's some, I don't know. I was surprised by some of the content that they actually showed in the documentary, Yeah, but I also thought it was a fascinating look into that. So I don't like forget watching it or anything i was just like oh and that is now on my tv screen and forever burned into my brain yeah yeah i do think (laughs) that i have to give the i mean he's not just the interviewer he's the dude like made the documentary yeah um i have to give him mad props because this has obviously been a years-long process and you kind of see the behind the scenes of where he's like he really is tricking this Ron Watkins and his father, Jim. He's like tricking them into like telling him information. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he knows they have these egos and he's just asking them leading questions. Like, yeah. Knowing that they can't fucking resist. Like they may not say that they are Q, but like asking them leading questions, like apparently in all Q and on posts, there's like these pens or these watches, like, you know, like off, just like barely off screen and like a picture Mm-hmm. Both of mm-hmm. these men have like pen and watch collecting obsessions and he'll just, you know, lead, mm. asks them really leading questions. And I got to yeah. give the dude props because I really do think 
like whether or not you believe it's Ron Watkins is Q. I think I I think the end of the documentary is like solid proof that, that it is Ron. Um, well, at least this so, like second gen of Q. Right. Yeah. You know? Which is yeah. like if if which is if that's at, true. The, problem child of yeah two. exactly he's he's <laughs> he's he's just this like sad pathetic boy on the internet he has no military level clearance like Hugh claims to have right so it's like if this is the dude you like the people are never going to accept it because they would have to accept that they got fucking duped oh, by yeah, a fucking course. loser incel yeah. um, mm-hmm. of course. because they are all loser incels mm-hmm. so i think it's like i think it's pretty f- uh freeing and like like oh like that's the fucking idiot all right like we can all move on with our lives and hopefully hopefully this documentary shows a lot of people the truth and that yeah. Uh, yeah. this QAnon bullshit can fade into obscurity. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Falcon in the Winter Soldier. Hey. Is a <laughs> segue television show that exists. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of times with WandaVision when we were doing these two episode recaps, I just got annoyed that we had to talk about the first episode because I just want to talk about the second episode. <laughs> and today is no different. Episode four blew my fucking mind hole. Yeah. Um, but we have to talk about episode three first. Yeah. Um, episode three opens up with a commercial from the GRC, which is the Global Repatriation. What does the C stand for? Center? Um, g- uh, council. Council, yeah, council. Uh, I mean, it makes sense to me, right? You got a fucking so many people returning from the blip. Mm-hmm. You, you gotta have, and apparently, the reason the flag smashers exist is because like there are there weren't borders anymore, right? So with all yeah, these people that everyone back, was like desperate for help, so anyone could kind of yeah go anywhere and and live anywhere they wanted, right? And we know that shit ain't gonna fly if you know the world is back to normal mm-hmm. yeah for some reason borders have to exist i don't fucking I'm, i don't fucking <laughs> i don't get it um but i don't know i think the first major thing that might happen in this episode is like the zemo breakout right yeah i don't mm-hmm. know if yeah anything really important happens before that no they, um, they go to uh we see sam and uh, bucky they like arrive at the place and and that's when bucky's like let me talk to him and all this stuff yeah and he's like you're an avenger he's not he's not gonna like yeah you. yeah and yeah. and i like i thought that this whole sequence was was just really great like it, you know it was just a little uh i mean obviously there's a lot of plot with the with the breakout that happens very quickly um mm-hmm. but I which just i'm love... thankful for it you know it's like they yeah. did yeah. Really like ocean's 11 style as yeah opposed to, exactly like, or, yeah yeah as opposed to like a long drawn out scene it was mm-hmm. just kind of like a cool montage absolutely yeah. yeah 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 and i just the little character beats in that scene with bucky and um and zemo were like really nice you know and then yeah. the way it transitions to that to that sort of like breakout sequence it's again i the thing i loved about it is that like oh you think it's actually happening in real time and then you quickly realize as it's progressing like oh no this is definitely this already, already happened, happened. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i just love yeah, the, he's like, like you broke zemo out he goes no he broke himself out like, yeah well yeah. he's like he's like <laughs> hypothetically what if you know like the yeah. way that they play that scene, <laughs> yeah um sebastian stands like line delivery and stuff just spot on in my opinion yeah so um good. so yeah they br- they break out Zemo and then they head to Madripoor which I think is the first time we've seen Madripoor in the MCU right It is right? it is yeah. 100% the first time which is, is exciting pretty fucking cool yeah. yeah Um I know there was a lot of like speculation on the internet of like Wolverine and Madripoor and it's yeah. like come on we weren't going to fucking get that No but um, you know <laughs> they're setting that shit up for later use like oh. in that regard. Oh 100% the so, fact that like the power brokers like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the fact that Madripoor exists is in itself like we want this to be here for this character for later yeah Right yeah, yeah. but we didn't get it but we do get um <laughs> we do I I do like that as they're on their way there Zemo puts on like a pimp coat and he yeah. fucking has like a private jet and Sam <laughs> yeah. is like, where did this come from? And like, I'm, you know, I'm not going to ever like be on Zemo's side. Cause obviously he, you know, he killed yeah. King T'Chaka, but I'm starting to kind of like his like snarky personality. Cause oh, yeah. he's like, I'm a fucking, oh, yeah. I'm a fucking Baron, Sam. 
Like, yeah, you may have forgotten that I'm I rich as money. fuck. Yeah. How do you how do you think <laughs> I did what I did in the first place? Like, yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense because they don't really like spend time in Civil War like trying to explain that because so much is yeah. going on. But yeah, it's just a great detail. You know, it's great world, great he world is, building. He is just a fucking rich old motherfucker, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think one of my, I think the show has gotten just generally speaking like immensely better with like Zemo involved, like with those two guys. Like yeah. it just it com- yeah, like it, so. it complicates their relationship in a way that is like really good dramatically, but also just a hell yeah. of a lot of fun to like sit there and watch those characters it, like, interact. Completes the that dynamic. It really does. I feel it really like. does, you know, and, and yeah, and so I think just having Zemo like be a part of this series in the way that he has, uh almost painting him like um trying to find like a like a good comparison but like you know that that like almost like a loki you know where he's like Mm -hmm. a good guy and he's also a bad guy and he has his own motivations you know and like um yeah he's he's not necessarily a lovable bad guy yeah yeah i I wouldn't even say he's like a good or a bad guy you know like he's definitely like a villain to the avengers but the avengers Mm -hmm. also like blew up his fucking country yeah so it's like it's it's shades of gray shades of gray for sure yeah yeah, it's shades of gray for sure Mm -hmm. a lovable character (laughs) There you go. I mean, yeah. we get the Zemo fucking dance moves in this episode. Yeah. Dude, okay, yeah. So, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw the they, – because people were, like, uh, obsessing about cut. that. over. Yeah. yeah. And then, <laughs> well, and then, no, Daniel Brühl was, like, so, by the way, like, an interview, he was, like, by the way, like, we shot a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, that you didn't see. And so, that's when people were, like, release the Zemo cut, and they fucking put it out, man. Yeah. It's, like, a 30-second so video good. of him just dancing. I was, like, it's better thought- than the Snyder cut. Yeah. <laughs> So I haven't watched it yet, so I can't clarify this. But yeah. I thought Marvel released an hour long I th- I, video I, of it. I think, but I don't know if it's just a loop. I think it's him on a loop. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Dang. But uh, still, but I saw the... still solid gold. Though. Still yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. You just put that on in the background <laughs> at a party and you dance with. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it, the funniest thing wonderful. about this Madripoor moment is that Bucky and Sam have to pretend like they're bad guys. Yeah. Right? Like. Yeah. Bucky has to pretend like he's still the Winter Soldier, and Sam has to not be Falcon. So he just what, what do they call him? Like the like the Panther or like the Jaguar? What the fuck do they call him? Yeah, and he's he, wearing he that has like suit with the fucking circles on it, and like it's yeah, so funny, man. And they make him. He's like uh, they make him take this like nasty shot of alcohol at the fucking bar, and he's like, mm, my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like it's pretty good. But then we do get it. that. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but we get to see. Bucky literally has to pretend to be the Winter Soldier. He yeah. has to take orders from Zemo to beat the shit out of some dudes in a bar. It's a pretty cool action scene, man. Like, yeah. getting to see Sebastian Stan revert back to that Winter Soldier uh, mindset was fun, I think. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and you know, also, I think uh, this at this point, this is where Sharon Carter comes into the... Uh, yeah, the picture here, which is great because she's kind of playing that little bit of guardian angel role sort of in this scenario. Um, not anything I'm necessarily surprised by, like with her reveal. I was like, OK, yeah, that makes sense. Like, um, but still, you know, pretty well executed, I thought. Yeah, for sure. They get. Yeah. I mean, I think that's so they get their cover blown when they're talking to whoever's upstairs at that bar and then they get led to Dr. Nagel. Yes. Who mm-hmm. apparently is the not the creator of the original Super Soldier Serum, but the creator of the the shit that's out on the street right yeah. now. Yeah. The shit that the yeah. Flag Smashers has. Exactly. He's the guy who who took the the um the research, if you will, from the original yeah. what was left of it from and, the winter and basically soldier like move forward from there using what right, was already. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. says I think the words he uses are he he optimized it right mm-hmm. so it's like yeah. you don't mm-hmm. like you you no longer get all like big and swole like cap you just are super strong yeah yeah and that's yeah. why carly morgenthau doesn't look like ronda rousey yeah. um, <laughs> she, she's just strong on her own yeah um, but zemo kills fucking dr nagel dude he's like yeah. i got all the info i wanted fuck you um the info being that I think he says there were 20 vials of this super soldier serum made. Yeah. Um, and they had made what five soldiers, I think they said already. So, or 10. That's what I'm something like that. That's I what remember. I, yeah. They've, I thought five. I thought it was five too, but yeah. But that's well, also, we, they did five in Civil War. So maybe that's where that's coming from. Mm, Ooh, okay. True. Yeah. 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 
Um, then there's, I don't know, this is like an action scene. There's bad guys show up from, I think, I think the power broker, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, and this like fight ensues. And I think it's well, a cause really... there's like a bounty on them from mm-hmm. the power broker. Right, yeah. right, so. right, right. Um, they are kind of discombobulated here. They're not really wor- like, I don't think Sam and Bucky are really working together the best they can mm-hmm. in this like fight scene. They're definitely like, I don't know if they're just looking out for themselves or they're just not working as a team, but I feel like each one kicked. is like trying to take charge. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So they're, they're clashing cause each, they each think they're in charge, which doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then you also have the bit here too where you think Zemo's like he puts the mask Gone. on and you think right. he's escaping yeah. and he ends up coming comes and saves the day which comes I with the was, getaway car. I know, right? I thought it was a, just a really great moment for him where it's yeah. like he's really milking this, you know, as a yeah. as a sort of villain in this um in this situation. But yeah. Well, I feel he like he's playing it pretty smart. Mask. Exactly. Like he's yeah. he knows that like they have the resources he doesn't have. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so he can just keep keep stringing them along yeah well and at, at the end of the day end. like it's a means to an end too right like exactly if he's, if he's you know ah, they say that in the next episode yeah exactly so um you know it's um i yeah. i'm kind of mad that the mask has only been on for like five seconds yeah like he puts it on and then he <laughs> fights but then he immediately takes it off like daniel Bruhl's like my face must be i'm i'm too attractive to yeah. be in. it's like <laughs> oh my god well he puts it on he fights but then he immediately takes it off and it's like um of i feel like it'll probably come back later though let's just it's fucking, say it's fucking that better. i may or may not know things and that the mask will probably um come back like there's, a, there's a good too. there's a good um there's a good chance let's just put it that way i mean after the end of the last episode or after the end of the next episode we're going to talk about i really do believe that the thunderbolts are coming so the mask mm-hmm. is, I mean, he will t- at some point definitely put the mask back on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. I really would just want to start talking about episode four. So I don't think anything really else happens in this episode. Um... They leave Nagel's place. Sharon goes off on her own little adventure. Yeah. Some yeah. people were theorizing that she's the power broker, but I don't necessarily follow that. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's... I'm curious who, who they're gonna I... who they're going to get to play the power broker or if we're even going to get to see him in this in this series. Yeah, we may or may not because I it may tie into like some – so because of a lot of MCU sh- – I guess it's not all modern, but like I think Weapon X might be tied into like the power broker. Um, mm. uh, that's just a personal theory. Um, but yeah, so I think the power broker may – like he may be in more than just this show. Just this, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah, would make sense. That, um, that, that would make a lot of sense. Um, after yeah, I mean, this, I think the Flag Smashers just kind of blow up a – Yeah. Like a, a, I think it was like a food supply Yeah, cache. it's a GRC. Yeah. It's a GRC facility. Um, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but in the process, Carly Morgenthau kills civilians, not yeah. just yeah. other people. So that's kind of like – up until then, I think she's been like – Ooh, I'm fighting the like I'm fighting the government and like mm-hmm. the Avengers, but like I'm fighting for the people, and then she kills the people, and it's like, ooh, okay, yeah. now you're just it now you're just a bad guy, questionable, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, which I think is great because it it complicates these characters in a way that's really yeah. really interesting in the following episode. Um, yeah, oh, and then for sure, and then yeah. obviously like the the final moment is uh, when uh, Ao. Uh, makes her yeah. appearance. Um, Ayo. Yeah. And it's like, oh shit, <laughs> shit just got serious. Like, which again, it makes total sense considering, like, of course Wakanda would know that, like, Zemo's out and they were like, Zemo okay, killed they're T'Chaka. Gonna, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. They're going to they're gonna fuck him up. They've too, got tabs you know? on like, him. Yeah. And, like, also the fact that, like, you know, they basically saved Bucky mm-hmm. for them, then him to go, blah, for him to then go and do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's like a big kick in the. That was face. a pretty, pretty great scene. I thought with her being like, "You fucked up, and you get ten hours." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and yeah. you know, also what's what's really cool too is you know at the beginning of that episode we actually get that flashback where it's like the yes, yeah, moving on to episode four. Everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, um, at the beginning of episodes four we have that sort of like uh, flashback where it's like he's finally been de- deprogrammed, so to speak. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. I just thought it's it's not a huge moment, but I just thought Sebastian Stan's acting there was like so. I think it's a it was huge good. Moment. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I think I agree. I think it was a huge moment, it and I think he he was 
brilliant in it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's a huge moment. I'm saying they didn't spend a lot of time on it. It's like a it's like sure, a minute sure, long yeah. scene that could have been a 10 minute sequence. You know what I mean? But for like, it just right. really packed the punch. No, I, I th- thought so. Yeah, I thought it was perfect that it was that short. Yeah, honestly, I agree. because we know totally. that you know we don't need to see more about how messed up he was and how he's okay now. Yeah. Like as far as not going to be triggered by the code words. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was a really brilliant short sweet setup of their relationship too yeah yeah exactly yeah it all makes sense that she was like there at the end of the last episode because she's the one who has kind of like a connection with him yeah yeah um i don't know you know maybe it was a romantic connection as well um Well, I, you know, I love that, too. Yeah. It, it really expands the Dora Milaje as well, because it's not mm-hmm. just like Okoye, like handling everything that's like not yeah. in Wakanda. Like it's it just makes right. it, it's like there, you know, it expands everything that in a way that's really great, I think. So, yeah, oh, it was I, really yeah. cool to see a lot more like new Dora Milaje mm-hmm. in this episode. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like that Bucky kind of just says like he's a means to an end. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, and here's kind of why, like, I think maybe they have, like, a personal relationship um, is because, like, you see how ruthless the Dora Milaje is <clears throat> everywhere else. And, you know, we basically anytime we see them on screen, they're just fucking ruthless. Yeah. Um, and she gives Bucky that time for seemingly, like, no reason, right? Like, she didn't yeah. have to. She could have been like, no, go fuck yourself. We're taking mm-hmm. him now um that's that's kind of the only reason i think maybe they have like a closer personal relationship is he's like i need this time and she's like fine but like Mm -hmm. you but you don't get a lot of it yeah yeah (laughs) totally and i love you know again like there was just that whole i mean at least in the the in phase three they kind of skipped over like a lot of that stuff with bucky like you know he's at wakanda and then next thing we know like he's ready to go you know infinity war Mm -hmm. so i just love that they're filling Mm -hmm. in those gaps you know Um, yeah and it works really well in my opinion. So, um, so yeah, I guess from from there, um, uh, we. Go ahead. I, I do. I do want to touch on one thing in episode three before we continue yeah. on with episode yeah. four because I think a big thing of episode four is like the unraveling of John Walker. And in yeah. episode mm-hmm. three, I remember, and I'm pretty sure this was in episode three. There's a moment where like John Walker kind of like screams, "Like, do you know who I am?" And yeah. it's like. He's yeah. already like even before he ends up getting the super soldier serum, which I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you fucking yeah. you watch the episode. Yeah. Um, but even before <laughs> he like goes crazy, he's already kind of being like an asshole. Like yeah. for yeah. someone to just scream like, "Do you know who I am?" It's like ah, you're like that's a that's such a fucking cocky thing to say. Yeah, that's um, pretty pretty awful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which and I don't know if this is the next thing in episode four after the white wolf scene, but Zemo has a really good conversation with the boys about like, um, the idea of the super soldier cannot be separated from the idea of like supremacy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Which is a really, like we, we know Zemo's mission, right? Yeah. Since civil war, we know like what his mission is, but I don't think we ever got like the reasoning. Yeah. Like his like ideology behind it. It was cool to see him like talk to them about like, no matter if you're good or bad, like the idea of like wanting to be better than everybody else cannot be unrooted from like the idea of like supremacy. And it's like, yeah, like he's like not wrong, which is funny because in that scene, he's like the Nazis Ultron, the -hmm. Avengers. Avengers. And he's like, Hey, that's our friends. Yeah. Uh, The Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to yeah, say, I think seriously. one of my favorite lines of the episode was that yeah. clarification. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the Nazis. That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, seriously. And and I, I like just in general, like I think um, especially the last two, these last two episodes, which are written by uh, Derek Kolstad, I believe is his name. Uh, just so well written. Like just just so Dude. so well layered, you know, like the way that Absol- all these absolutely. elements, these sort of story threads are starting to come together. Like it just works. Oh, well. that was something. Sorry, just jumping back to episode three real fast because you you're talking about layers and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, after episode three, I went back and rewatched Civil War. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and they like the small it just marvel just continues to blow my mind with the smallest little tie-ins and callbacks and stuff mm-hmm. um because when they jump in the car with zemo sam jumps in the back and is like you're uh, not yeah. gonna move up the seat are you yeah. 
and yeah. that is the direct opposite of what happened in Civil War. Mm-hmm. And I had like forgotten about that, and yeah. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah, it's pretty good. Ugh, it's a Jimmy all Woo. the levels. It's a Jimmy Woo levels. level reference on that one. For yeah, me. exactly. It's like, exactly. hey, I get that reference. Uh, yeah. By by the way, Derek Kolstad like wrote all of the John Wick movies, so that actually kind of makes a lot oh, of nice. sense. Yeah, remember, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> I was like, "What is what? Are, where have I seen his name before?" <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, that definitely makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then and then uh, oh, anyway, I guess at this point, like uh, is the when Zemo's like, "Hey, uh, I can help you find like this chick you're looking for, Morgenthau." Yeah, they're trying to find a way. <laughs> so Carly Morgenthau's like mentor died. And they know she's going to be at the funeral, so they want to find out where the funeral is going to be. Um, before we move to that, though, I do want to say, for all of Zemo's hate of super soldiers and super powered people, uh, I think it's—I don't know if it's Bucky or Sam, but they say like, um, like Steve Rogers was a good man, and yeah. he had the super soldier serum, and Zemo kind of like concedes to the fact that like he might be the one superpowered person like he doesn't have a problem with because he yeah his response was there's never been another steve rogers mm-hmm. yeah um, he said yeah. touche one of a yeah he's like well what about steve and he goes touche but there's never been another steve rogers has there yeah and it's like so it's and i think that's maybe how the thunderbolts might be formed is like zemo doesn't necessarily have an issue with like all superpowered people just the ones that like are maybe are bad yeah, or against <laughs> his narrative, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was cool to see Zemo like pay respects to Cap. Yeah. Yeah. The true Cap. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. yeah, the only the only yeah. Cap. The only yeah. Cap. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, so they end up going to that GRC compound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was, I thought that was really funny how they just like Sam went upstairs to like talk to everybody and everyone was just like no <laughs> like hiding and like clo- like they were just like closing doors like running like, away from okay, him it was yeah. like yeah uh, <laughs> yikes bro yeah, i honestly right. thought like i on like that did just end up like him not finding the information but like the way they were playing that out kind of seemed like it was going to be like an ambush or something yeah, yeah yeah for sure definitely but i'm but, okay i'm but, okay with that because it plays against what we we're expecting to happen you know what yeah. i mean yeah Right. No, I thought it was great. Basically, you know, it's we find out that it's because they don't trust outsiders. Yeah. And yeah. An well, and that guy was like, "I know who you are, mm-hmm. and yeah. you can't help me." And I was yeah. like, "Ah, yeah. fuck." Yeah. yeah. You can't even help as the Avengers, bro. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zemo's outside singing fucking "Baba Black Sheep" and giving children <laughs> Turkish delights, like fucking. The chick oh from fucking gosh. The Witch in the Wardrobe. Seriously. <laughs> it actually, honestly, it reminded me of uh, of Dr. Sleep, actually, with the um, with the Rebecca mm. um, Ferguson character. Can't remember mm-hmm. her name off the top of my head, but definitely that kind the of hat. thing. The hat. The hat. Yes, Rose the Hat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, actually, I understand the... your reference, but my reference actually has Turkish Delights in it. So. Oh, my god! And another MCU alum. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But Mr. still, Chumley. that's uh, it's definitely like an interesting scene. Um, it feels it almost feels like slightly predatory. Like you feel a little bit uncomfortable, yeah. like kind of watching that oh, scene. But absolutely. The way that it's written and the way Daniel Brule, uh, Daniel Brule plays it um, is I, I was happy that it didn't. It could have been worse. Let's put it that way. It could have been yeah. way, way worse. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought he was gonna like kidnap her or fucking yeah, I don't know like, what the fuck he what it was yeah, gonna do, like, but it was like hold her for ransom or something. Well, and again, it like yeah, it's it was creepy. I think that's it's 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 interesting because it again reaffirms that idea of like okay, Zemo isn't like a terrible person like like we thought he may be. You know what I mean? Based yeah. on the previous film, so like again, well, just, he absolutely understands this country's plight since what happened yeah. to him. You know, like yeah. if he was gonna be a terrible person, it's not gonna be to this fucking yeah. You know, like yeah. war porn well, country, like his was. Yeah. Because he's he also said he'd he'd been there before to that place for parties. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like this was his turf in a sense, you know. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, but so he ends up getting information out of this young girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About the funeral. So we do find out where the funeral is, and I was I was watching. Look, a lot of times when we talk on this show, the theories are are my own wild conjecture. <laughs> um, but I was watching a breakdown theory of this episode, and uh, 
EA Voss, Mr. Eric Voss over at New Rockstars, mm-hmm. was talking about how in the last episode and in this episode, he believes that there was a a a really big subplot that was cut out of the show because of coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, that would make sense. So yeah, well, it, one of the biggest ones was in episode three when Nagel says that. Um, and I'm blanking on her name, but Carly Morgenthau's like mentor. He says she Mama dies of tuberculosis. Yeah, that was very obviously it, 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 like in an added line. Like it was mm-hmm. ADR. Yeah. Um, and then he says in like the scene in this episode where they're all sitting in that like broken down building and like they really just do the audio of the phone as they're like showing these weird close-ups of other like – Apparently, he believes that there was a a subplot that was cut out of this movie or hmm. show. Um, and like, I went back and rewatched it, and I ha- tend to agree with him. Like, yeah. I think the death of Corley, Carly Morgenthau's mentor was supposed to play like a bigger part of the show, yeah. and instead, mm-hmm. they were just like, "Yeah, it's tuberculosis. She's dead." <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know that. Um... I know that they were supposed to shoot big portions of this uh, show in Puerto Rico, and it, yeah. the location definitely feels like something you'd find in Puerto Rico. So I would not be surprised. Like a lot of this, I think this was kind of the. A episode. lot of it was actually filmed in Prague. Yeah, yeah, no, that would make that would make tons of sense, especially the stuff with John Walker later when you know that last. Yeah, scene, this that, that was. I clearly... think the. I think this whole episode, um, then this whole part of the world was was filmed in okay. Prague. Interesting, um, interesting. Because my friend's fiance is from that area and keeps pausing the show to be like i know this place <laughs> and i know um, that place <laughs> definitely. But, by the way i think so. aaron aaron kellyman who plays carly morgenthau is is really great i don't know if you guys yeah. remember but she's in solo as well as um as the yeah. vi- the villain at the end uh who's not really a villain at all um like spoilers the, like, i guess i the like the marauders or whatever yeah i don't remember what yeah her i don't know what their is, names but are. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah. I, I mean it's just great seeing her like in this and having more to do um and have really enjoyed her acting in this as well so mm-hmm. for sure yeah um we could go over every fucking tiny detail um yeah, i think no. the next big thing <laughs> that happens is john walker and um uh, lamar yeah. lamar yeah yeah, yeah. Battlestar, as we mm-hmm. know him, um, they kind of come up short on leads after the last episode. Um, so they just go, well, you know what? We know fucking Sam's got Zemo. Let's just go fucking see what they're up to. Yeah. And they kind of tag along to this first like Carly Morgenthau meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I look some fucking somehow Sam convinces John to be like, let me go talk to her Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. before we storm in there. Let me go talk to her. Mm-hmm. And I thought this scene, man, was really good. Sam just like conceding some points. Like, look, I don't disagree with your ideology. I just don't like the way you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. And that's this is the whole scene where they're in like the boiler room, right? Is kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, no, and and the way he just like sort of change up Zemo and then like just why Russell's acting in the way like you can tell like he's fitting he's to to go fuck somebody up you know what I mean like yeah. it's, it's brilliant. Oh, yeah. and yeah. then you know you also have the the whole moment of like as soon as he pockets the soldier the super soldier serum like you know he's taking it and the show oh, yeah. like obviously like takes a little bit a few they try to build it up a little bit but, you know, it's just it's great, like knowing, like, you know, essentially what's coming with all this stuff. Um, I do have yeah. to say, I thought it was a odd moment when Sam is like, yo, let me talk to her because, like, I used to do this for soldiers. I can I can handle this. And uh, Walker is like, yeah, I, I know those soldiers. And that's why I don't want you to do this. So was, just the implication yeah. of that oh, statement yeah, yeah, yeah. was odd to me. Um, and then Lamar has like is the one who's like, no, nah, dude, like he's right. Let him do this. Yeah. yeah. I think it's kind of like um, I think a lot of media 
portrays like people trying to help soldiers with PTSD don't necessarily do a good job. You know, like the yeah. VA is underfunded. They do yeah. a shitty job. So just yeah. because Sam says he knows how to deal with them, John Walker being like a soldier who's been to war is like, yeah, I know you do that. And it doesn't fucking help us. Um, yeah, I, it just made that's it, how I it, took it. It sounded mm. more personal than like the generic helping yeah. soldiers. Like, cause he was like, I know those guys. So to me that I thought that he meant like, yeah. He personally knows the people that Sam talked to. Gotcha. Yeah. But maybe I read too much into that. I'm not sure. No, I think that's kind of the way I took the took that uh that line at least, but you know, I also don't like necessarily know like like if that's implying to I didn't I wasn't sure if there was he was implying to like specific people that we were seeing or that we know at least at this point or if it's just more of a general kind of blanket blanket statement, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah how I mean, I, took it. Yeah. I don't know that we would ever see any of those yeah, people. It's, I, don't I just, it, yeah. you know, totally. I don't know. Anyway, he lets him go. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to Carly. Yeah, and it's <laughs> and it's, he all and he's doing a really good job. I think mm-hmm. of it too. Until yeah. John's like, I'm a dick, and I'm over this shit. Yeah, and, and then yeah. like ruins the meeting, and she's like, of of course, as that classic like, you betrayed me, Sam, and he's like, no, I told yeah. him to wait. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think Zemo escapes yeah. mm-hmm. for the first time in this episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the second time in the series. Well, third time, technically. Third time, yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, true, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's funny how, like, none of them are, like, Sam almost gets through to Carly. He fails. Like, John's trying to capture her. He fails. And then Zemo just fucking straight up, like, shoots her. Like, he, yeah. he yeah. hits her with it. He fucking, yeah. he shoots her. Yeah. yeah. Um, she loses a super soldier serum and Zemo, I think it's to do a little bit of uh just like self filating as he's fucking yeah. stomping on these super yeah. soldier serums. Yeah. Like do you, do you think he believes like the mission is like complete now? I think I think yes and I, no. No no, I don't think so. Yeah, because you still have the super soldiers running around that yeah that right. she helped create. But in terms of having more super soldiers like obviously that part of his mission i think is complete at this point like i think i think for zemo it's like one yeah i think for zemo it's like control the situation first right like okay we need to get Mm -hmm. rid of the fucking super soldier serum and then we can take care of the people that like are running around doing crazy shit on it you know yeah um so yeah uh but of course as we know it wouldn't be dramatic Uh, if you destroyed all of the vials (laughs) there was one left wasn't there yeah Yep. Convenient. Carly runs away so she doesn't get shot again, and there's one vial left. Does Zemo find and it? No, no, Zemo doesn't find it. No, mm. because he gets hit in the head with the shield. Okay, first of all, out. how does he get fucking hit in the face with the shield and there's no like wound? Like, yeah. <laughs> also, no that bruise. he's drinking alcohol as his recovery for a concussion. Yeah, questionable. My I mean... man, no, he gets it. <laughs> he... He understands. I was going to say, I think Joel begs to differ over here. <laughs> I knew he a, would, but yeah. like, mm, you know, medical yeah. science. Oh, yeah. I've had a concussion. <laughs> Alcohol didn't kill me. Yeah. <laughs> didn't kill me. <laughs> Great uh, defense, Joel. Oh, gosh. Great defense. Yes. So John Walker finds this thing. He pockets it sneakily, mm-hmm. not telling anybody. And then he kind of like loses his patience and says, like, we're taking in Zemo. Um, yeah. And then I think it. I think what I think it may have been eight hours. Yeah, I think it may mm-hmm. have been eight hours yeah. since uh, Ao told uh, old Bucky that he didn't have a lot of time left. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly, and that's that's obviously when like Walker's like, you know, what's your ju- you you don't have jurisdiction here, and then they're like, oh, Ugh. the Dora Milaje has jurisdiction wherever the Dora Milaje is. Like, it's yeah. one of my yeah, favorite so good. favorite lines. Yeah, I love right before that though. It's like they they like preface this scene with all this like male masculinity where like yeah john walker like drops the shield and he challenges sam to like a regular fight yeah. he's like i don't need this fucking shield that's battle and then it's like nah these two chicks are gonna come in and fuck your shit up instead yeah mm-hmm. um, seriously that fight scene was one of the best choreographed oh. fight scenes in the mm-hmm. mcu dude yeah. yes it really oh, is oh god it was so yes. good and 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 even like I mean, it's a little on the nose, you know what I mean? But even uh, Wyatt Russell's delivery where he's like, I couldn't even, like, defeat them. Like, it's just that that self-doubt that he has that is, Ugh. like, sort of carried throughout the they series. They weren't even super soldiers. I know. Yeah. And it's just so, like, even though you obviously are meant to hate the character, it's actually kind of a little bit of heartbreaking because 
you realize that like he's all he's trying to do is to live up to the Captain America name. Like obviously the fact that he'll he's doing he's willing to do whatever it takes to live up to that is obviously not like a good approach in terms of his yeah. character morality. But you know, I think I think there's something to be said for like sympathizing with his character and you know the fact that he is deep down despite all the other shit like he he's coming from a good place but it's like misguided at the same time you know and i think that's what really makes this episode hit so hard at the end is like that conflict mm-hmm. that's happening you know yeah well i think they I, I think they want you to believe that he's like i mean he's doing the right thing in regards to what the government is telling him yes. to do but that's yes. not necessarily the right thing the right thing i think yeah. right before the dora milaje fight he has a, a conversation with lamar and he's like would you take it if you had the chance and he tells him like it just it it just amplifies who you already are as a person mm-hmm. and that calls back to the episode three thing where he says like do you know who i fucking am and it's like yeah, yeah. you're not a, like you want to do the right thing but you're a fucking dick yeah like, well even exactly. in that episode when the dormilaji come in he tries to be like i'm captain america like i'm gonna yeah. smooth this over because i'm the shit yeah He's and they're a like human tool yeah yeah like, it's like nah, dude <laughs> using, using that, that that cockiness to like sort of uh, put a band-aid over your insecurities to a certain respect like exactly or, you know like the, exactly. like the like he like it's almost like he feels like he's not getting the respect he deserves as captain america quote unquote you know yeah and it's like well, and you it, haven't earned that shit <laughs> yeah and i think kind of going back to what you were just saying joel like um he also, when he's talking to Lamar, talks about how, like, yeah, I have these medals of valor, but it didn't feel like I was doing the right thing to get them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the yeah. reason, I, you know, I didn't get them for a, like, morally right reason. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think so, he said Afghanistan, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah. which is... Yeah, dude, you were pillaging, a like, you were pillaging an, another country, and, like, yeah. the government decided to reward you for it. So, like, yeah. while they're trying to tell us, like, oh, John Walker's, like, you know, like, a good soldier he's just not a good person but it's like yeah but a good soldier and okay like i'm sorry if there are any like vets who listen to this podcast but like just doing what the government tells you to do does not make you like a good person you know what i mean like yeah yeah it makes you a good soldier and, but not a good person right yeah, yeah but like and like especially in especially in the context of this universe where mm-hmm. like the grc is to the flag smashers like the bad guys like yeah. john mm-hmm. walker just doing whatever they tell him to do is like making yeah. like that makes him the bad guy mm-hmm. um to some you know yeah yeah to a certain degree yes yeah totally yeah and to be clear there are good soldiers out there like good people oh, yeah of course good not. soldiers course not. But, but that's I, not steve the, rogers I get what you're saying yeah, yeah well, that's exactly. not what this show's trying to explore though this tries no this, this no show's no trying to like well obviously we know that but for the listeners like yeah it's pretty right. obvious this show is trying to explore the flip side of like what captain america is or what we expect him to be and all the sort of things that come with that, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, and I mean it's right. it's possible that John was a better person before he went to war. But yeah. war does change people, mm-hmm. and so maybe that's where a lot of this villainy, yeah, is coming from too. You know, where yeah. he's still, yeah, I think it does harken back person, to, ep- but mm-hmm. yeah, I think it does harken back to the first Avenger though, when the guy tells Steve, yeah, like, exactly, you're not like if. If if you were the best person you could be, you wouldn't be a good soldier. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, like oh, you're you not a good Stanley soldier. Tucci? You're a good person. Yes, yeah. old Stanley Tucci himself. I know, right? Um, <laughs> and just to think, Stanley Tucci is like the, at least his character is like the person who's essentially responsible for like all of the all, MCU. All of it. Yeah, you know, it's like like Him a twenty, Stark, 20 yeah. minute cameo. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, emotionally but, speaking, because like that that right. character really does set up like who and what Captain America is supposed to be. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like interesting yeah. looking back on that at this current point, even. So yeah, what I really enjoyed about the storytelling in this episode is I think since the beginning, I always kind of assumed that John Walker was going to get his ass kicked by a villain mm-hmm. that he mm-hmm. couldn't handle. Yeah, that's why he would take the serum and turn bad. Mm-hmm. And they just and they did such a good job of just like he was emasculated by the good like the Dora Milaje or like the good guys yeah. like yeah. he got his ass kicked by the good guys and he couldn't handle it because he's not top brass balls of shit mm. yeah and he ends up taking the serum 
Um, and I, I just really love how they, I think a lot of people probably assumed like, oh, John's going to be out of his depth in a fight and he has to take the fucking serum to defeat the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And then he turns bad. Yeah. And it's like, nah, dog, like he turns bad to take the serum. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I dig it. I dig, yep. I dig the way they just kind of like flipped it on what I would assume yeah. to be like the obvious answer's head. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, too. And and I think even jumping off that, like moving forward plot wise, like when they have Morgenthau uh, basically call and like threaten Sarah, like typical yeah. kind of thing that we'd seen. But we actually learned that, like, no, she was just more so like trying to find out if Sam was like for real or not. You know what I mean? Who he really. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And if it he goes, really wanted to help. Totally. Yeah. And it yeah. goes to that idea of like, who is John Walker? Well, who is Sam Wilson? You know what I mean? And and so like, I, I just think that what the show is trying to do in, in terms of all those different elements and bringing them together to one sort of cohesive theme about, oh, you know, it's great. Yeah. Morality yeah. in a certain respect. Like, um. It, it's just it was a really well constructed episode just the way they put all that stuff together so yeah yeah i don't totally. really i don't remember specifically what she said in that conversation to carly but i remember mm -hmm. she was like if you believe anything believe sam's not fucking working for that guy like yeah it was yeah. something along the lines of if you believe anything sam said believe that he's not fucking with that captain america dude like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. really enjoyed yeah. that part of the conversation because yeah. it was that like captain he's america really yeah. really <laughs> not yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, and Sam. Then, but Sam does show up to that private meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he shows mm -hmm. up, and then uh, basically but he doesn't show up alone. Yeah, like she asked. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, oh, the other thing that I that we didn't really get to mention that I want to talk about is when they fucking deactivate Bucky's arm. Like that shit was kind yes! of hilarious. How they're just like, oh. boop, you don't have an arm anymore. Okay, now we're yeah. gone. You can put it back on. <laughs> and his face Yo, is just yeah. like. Uh yeah, he's and and, and Sam's what? like Sam was like, Did you know they could do that? And he's kinda like, he's like No, not really. No. <laughs> you should have yeah, it makes it better because it is from it's from Ao who's been like yeah. helping him. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, I put this on you, I can fucking yeah. Take it yeah. She's just like, Stop. It's like a kill Stop switch, playing. you know, it's just a kill switch yeah. on the arm. It's great. But then that is a cool winter soldier reference where he like swings his arm forward to like oh. reactivate it, yeah, which he yeah, does yeah. in the winter like Mm -hmm. In Captain America and the Winter Soldier, just mm -hmm. these small. Oh, and when he retaches it, there's like the purple, like the purple glowy yeah. bits in his arm, yeah. which is the same tech like that Black uh, that yeah. Black Panther has in in, in yeah, it's his the, suit. Um, the, yeah, the nanotech. It's not nanotechnology, but it's yeah. the uh, yeah. I, I can't think the of kinetic word. energy yeah, shit. Kinetic, yeah. Thank you. That's the word. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then and then obviously like uh, like shit goes out of hand again quickly this time uh i think morgenthau was able to ex uh, escape um oh no 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 well, she does, they fight and then she uh she does the dirty on uh on well they buddy. know okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah they they find out so like we skipped over all of the sharon shit in this episode but it's very small they like it's, yeah sharon seems to know all these bad guys she's like walking through this like tunnel and is just like head nodding as she's walking through all these like barricades that you would expect them mm -hmm. to like check who you are but she's just being able to walk through all them yeah but they basically yeah. ask for eyes in the air like if john walker comes for carly like let us know mm -hmm. um and in that meeting she's like john walker is fucking here what's up <laughs> um, yeah. yeah watch watch out um and that's the first time we get to see like he he throws the shield and the dude dodges it and it gets lodged in the wall yeah and that's kind mm -hmm. of the first that's the first little sign we get that he took the serum you're like oh mm. he's fucking strong yeah <laughs> yep yeah and then we get a couple of the fights where he's like bending the pipe on the dude and the dude's like oh fuck yeah yeah you realize, yeah and 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 just and to, go ahead Lauren. i was just saying i think that's also when at least sam realizes mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, he that like, he's taking he like, the sam because he sees him bend the pipe he beats yeah. the fuck out of that dude and he's like what did you do yeah 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 absolutely um and then uh morgan thou as she's escaping she basically like kills um what's his name his Lamar. Record. Lamar, thank you. I don't know why I keep forgetting. Yeah. 
Well, um, yeah, wanna, she, she takes some right hostage. You the fucking meat of the action, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I just, I'm excited, dude. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited moment, okay? I mean, um, it's... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. The end of the scene is she literally fucking Superman punches him, and he, mm-hmm. like, flies back and, like, Crashes breaks his neck on a, a wall. Pillar. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, in, in, in that fight scene, like, prior to Battlestar's death... I really enjoyed seeing a lot of like Falcon using his like wingsuit in like close quarters. Mm. You know yeah. I mean? like, we usually see him like out in the air mm. or like yeah. using red wing, but it's really cool to see him like use like, cause you would think like, Oh, how would that work in like, in yeah. like a small room? And he's like, here, let me fucking show you. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I Absolutely. thought like that fight scene was really cool. It was creative. For Instead sure, of yeah. running, just flying away. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. He like used yeah. it to his advantage. Like, he like pulled the dude. I don't know. I, I, a lot of the way he used it in that scene, I thought was like super creative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, it was really yes. cool. But Battlestar has been um, tied up in another room for mm-hmm. this entire fight. And the Carly's friend, Nico, who earlier in the episode said that he was actually a fan of Captain America. Because um, his is, grandfather fought Nazis. Yeah. Is hypocritically holding john walker chest open for carly to come and stab him in the chest mm-hmm. and battlestar tackles carly to defend john walker yeah. carly responds by fucking one man punching him <laughs> to death mm-hmm. um yeah and that's when john walker loses his He's mother shit. fucking mind mm-hmm. guys this might be <laughs> one of the coolest fucking sequences in the MCU to date. Yeah. And I think the most visually brutal, to be honest. Yeah. I think yeah. it's the I most wrote, blood we've ever seen in the MCU. Yeah. I wrote in my notes right here, blood is rare in the MCU. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It really is. Um, and it we've really seen we see is. it a couple times in this episode because we see it when Carly gets shot too. Right. Mm-hmm. But like people get shot in the MCU all like Falcons murked a bunch of motherfuckers, you know, yeah. in yeah. a lot of movies, and you don't usually see blood. They're you just like, yeah. oh, I got shot and I'm dead. Yeah. 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 Um, John Walker's even bleeding from like the temple. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, uh, assuming he's got some kind of a head wound from that fight. But yeah, he does the opposite of um, Steve Rogers in Civil War when he, or not Civil War. Yeah, it's in, no. Captain America Winter Soldier when Wanda throws him up and into the roof or like into mm. the window. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. John Walker yeah. runs and jumps out of the window mm. and lands yeah. and is chasing after Nico. He's trying to find <laughs> actually, did you guys know where is she? Yes. He screams, <laughs> he screams where is she? And I was like, oh, He pulls a Christian bail. Yeah. My life has been forever ruined from that fucking phrase. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. You have to say something else like where did she go? Like you can't. Well, say it's where also she the anymore. tone that he says it. It literally sounds like they yeah. took yeah. the audio of Batman. Christian Bale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was. It was. It, it was rough. Um, but he chases down Nico, the old Captain America fanboy, and uh, you know does the old beat down on him, and he's laying on the steps of that monument. And mm-hmm. here's where I like. I get that John's doing the bad thing here, but my favorite part is when the dude's like. It wasn't me. And it's like, Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. It wasn't you, but you were also just holding his chest open for Carly to stab him five seconds ago. Like, what are you trying to absolve yourself of? Like, I didn't kill Battlestar. I was just trying to kill you. Yeah. Doesn't make it any better. Yeah. (laughs) Totally. Yeah. But I also feel like the fact that like, he's clearly trying to come after him because he killed his best friend. And then like Mm -hmm. the fact that he does say it wasn't me multiple times. And then John still, I get that. Bashes but him to death. Think back like, to that fight scene. If he was like, if he was fighting John and John turned around and killed him because he was trying to stab him, like, would he be yeah. like, why are you trying to kill me now? But then he was like, it wasn't me. And it was like, nah, well, you're, you're not, you're not innocent. I, uh, I get what you're saying, but I do think it, it added some weight in yeah, that so moment, right. especially because at least to the bystanders. Oh, yeah, oh 100%. Yeah. I'm just playing the devil's advocate of like you're a, you're a you're a bad guy. You just oh, tried to yeah, kill him like definitely. five fucking and seconds I, ago. And I think it yeah. comes from a place of like that pure reaction of like you're gonna do whatever you're gonna say whatever you need to to not to like save your life. To basically. not die. Like, yeah. you, you know what I mean? 
And but you know what I love about I mean, and it's obviously pretty it's pretty obvious like dramatic irony, but I still think it's good dramatic irony is like the guy who fell in love with Captain America as a kid and then Gets like it, the ended shield. up rebelling yeah. against that sort of system ends up getting killed by that system to a certain respect. So it's just it's yeah. it's it's smart storytelling. And everybody's recording this yep. attack that John Walker just brutally murders this dude. Yeah. Which the irony is not lost on us that it's the same kind of like motion that Steve used mm -hmm. to deactivate Tony in Civil War. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he only does the like you you know, in Civil War, it's like he's gonna decapitate him and he yeah. just hits him once. It's the arc. Yeah. Yeah. It's the arc. But John Walker goes in for multiple hits to brutally murder the dude. Yeah. In the middle of a town square. <laughs> yeah. When everybody's recording him. And like we said, blood is rare in the MCU. Mm -hmm. We get the fucking shot. But Bucky Ugh. and Sam roll up like what just happened. Yeah. And Zemo, and I think, Walker is there even too, the right? Uh, not that I no, oh, no, Zemo has escaped, has escaped at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. He escaped that. during that Dora Milaje yeah. fight. During the Dora Milaje fight, he El Chapo's it, yeah. as Sam says, and goes through the sewers yeah. and he escapes. El Chapo's it, yeah. Yeah. But fucking after he murders this dude, he's got the shield on his arm and it's the upshot of like the Ugh. shield covered in blood. I know. The blood I gotta say I've never seen in the MCU, I think. Yeah, yeah. I I'm pretty sure. Like I I would swear on whatever that it is the bloodiest shot that we've ever seen in the MCU. Oh, yeah. But like and, and it's like the toughest, like worst thing to see, but also like the greatest shot of all time. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like that's the <laughs> like I get that I'm supposed to hate you, but I fucking love this scene. Like it is yeah. so good. Just like that that pan up with the with the soundtrack that's happening and that like ugh from a from a film standpoint, it was gorgeous. Yeah. So he can't be Captain America anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. The implications of this episode are like people have recorded like it's the social media age. Like yeah. people were asking for his autograph while he was in that like when he was having that conversation with Lamar about like whether mm -hmm. he would take the serum or not, yeah. he was like signing autographs, right? Like people know he's there. People know who he is. Yeah. And they've got video of him brutally murdering someone. Um, who says he didn't do it. Like, right. Exactly. Yeah. And this is where I think the Thunderbolts kind of come into play. So he's been called Captain America this entire time, but we know John Walker is the U S agent, which is another character in the MCU. Or not the MCU in Marvel. Mm -hmm. um, I think Zemo's going to come back with that mask and create his own little team with one U.S. agent, John Walker, since he can't be Captain America anymore. What do you guys think? Interesting. I find it hard to believe, only because he's a super soldier and Zemo's yeah. totally against the super soldiers. So, but I... Zemo is against that in the comic books, and he still runs the Thunderbolts. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I just uh I wouldn't I would not be I would not expect a larger team up uh in this series. I think this series is definitely oh, not like in this, more I'm focused. saying they're setting, they're setting it, up. it up for sure. There's only two but episodes like, left. It's yeah, not gonna I wouldn't, happen in this I wouldn't expect <laughs> fucking like, you know, some sort of I don't know. You could maybe you could definitely lay the seeds for that. Let's put it that way. Um but but yeah, I mean I just think it's, you know, it's a really interesting place to leave the series, especially essentially like what is at the end of this, the second act, late second act, you know, early third act mm -hmm. uh, in the story. So, yeah, I just I hope that everything's going to tie up well together and that uh, we're going to get like a sort of a compelling ending to all of these story threads that are starting to come together, which I mean... I'm digging everything so far. It's funny because yeah. there are a lot of people, and I know you you felt this way a little bit, Joel, where it's like the first two episodes were kind of like, meh. You know, like a lot of people weren't like sold on it. And me is like, I dig it. Like I dig, I understand what the show's trying to do. Whoa, from, whoa, like, whoa. The Don't very... throw me under the bus. No, no, no. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying you do. I love just... the episodes. I just whoa. didn't understand how they were going to do everything <gasps> exactly in the amount of time they had totally totally yeah. and that's and that's not to like not to say that you hated it but you weren't like there's a lot of people that were like okay this is good but like i'm not blown away by this right yeah and, i mean and, i've I, go ahead sorry taylor yeah, you go, go first and then I, no i was just gonna say i i was never like oh my god yes falcon winter soldier yeah. like i've always yeah. been like yeah we'll see what happens exactly but, like it's definitely it's definitely um 
superseded my expectations yeah, i guess definitely that and it's what's well, way more compelling now too and i just that's funny yeah that, exactly it's funny because that's why i think it's interesting is like i definitely saw what this story was trying to do and found it fairly compelling from from the beginning but it seems like this episode episode four in particular was like where a lot of people were like oh shit like okay i really see what this show is trying to do and like i'm 100 percent on board and i mean yeah it kind of sucks when like you know you're in the episode four and there's only two more left and people are finally <laughs> on board but i still think that's a good thing i think that's like that yeah. means that like you, you you have good storytelling like that's captivating people in a way yeah. that's making them want to see how the story ends so yeah i mean i had used to tv again yeah, yeah i mean it's true you know and how also to watch it now. Get, getting used to Marvel TV too is still kind of yeah. weird. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be sort of used to that yet. At least until we have a fix of like some p- Marvel proper, you know, so I, theatrical release, so to speak. You know, I was thinking about that t- today actually because I I finally got to watch the episode this morning. Yeah. Um, I think Wandavision was easier for me to take as a tv show Mm -hmm. than this is because of how episodic it was in its nature whereas like watching this episode today i was like ready to find the resolve like find out the resolve to this whole thing today and then i was like no i have two more weeks definitely definitely and even because it feels so much more cinematic Mm -hmm. i have always stated that i want an x-men tv show I don't want any more fucking movies. I don't want any more fucking hour and a half <laughs> Dark Phoenix bullshits. I want, I want what we have right now. I want every Marvel property to have its own fucking television show. And then the big blockbuster movies are the fucking team up movies at the end. Or the crossover right? movies, yeah. Avengers, yeah. yeah. All the like the big blockbusters are all the shit at like the end of like the line, right? At, mm-hmm. at like the end of the subway car. Like I want like an X-Men TV show. I want a Fantastic Four TV show. I want a fucking Secret Wars TV or like a, a Secret Invasion fucking TV show. And then the end of all of these plot lines is the big blockbuster movie, which of course will never happen because they want all the money. But like, yeah. <laughs> I think this plays so well as nine. Like imagine a Falcon in the, in the Winter Soldier movie. All of this yeah. shit, a lot of the shit we, we wouldn't have gotten. Yeah. No, a lot no of this would have been left out. Yeah, it just um, it's it's been a stab. It's been further establishing these characters and like delving yeah. into more detail of these characters so nicely. And I think that was it. Like you said, it's it's been missing from the movies because there's just not time for yeah. it. And I think it's making a lot more people fans of these characters that weren't otherwise like. Yeah. Not that they necessarily didn't like them, but they weren't as invested in mm-hmm. them or, yeah. you know, as intrigued by them because we didn't know a lot about them. Yeah, exactly. Sure. And and that's so. where these, these 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 series essentially become character explorations for like, you exactly. know, the, like they said, I mean, they, they were trying to explore like lesser t- characters that didn't get as much screen time in any of the previous movies, you know, and I think it's yeah. it's really a testament to like, you know, and, and obviously like a TV show episodic format like this even miniseries whatever you want to call it and and a film obviously like ha- each have their boundaries and limitations and all that stuff and uh sure. i think you know i think it's good that that we can have our cake and eat it in that respect like we can have the yeah. six hour tv show and then we can also have the two hour fucking black widow movie you know what i mean yeah um yeah. Well, so yeah. i think i really like that idea joel because i i i feel like it would it would have been so nice as much as of course the MCU is is great and wonderful it almost would have been nice to have a lot of these type of shows earlier That's with some saying. of these other avengers and so like moving forward it would be great to have these subplots to make the larger movies even yeah. more impactful you exactly know? and i think yeah, that's that's I'm where saying, these shows man. are really going to shine is when you get to characters like moon knight and like she hulk and like characters that haven't yeah. been established that are first going to be established in a tv exactly. series and then exactly. appear, you know what i mean yeah so, yeah, yeah totally yeah that's why i think we i know they didn't give us fucking reed richards and wandavision you know <laughs> they haven't necessarily done anything with weapon x yet we haven't seen the end of the uh, the fucking series yet yeah. of F- falcon and the winter soldier but I think like I think you should uh, I think it would be smart to start laying these seeds, you know, for the larger movies because I just think it plays 
don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I cried watching Avengers Endgame in the theater. You know, I love these mm-hmm. big moments, but I just think I want to spend more time with these characters always. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. if they came to me and they were like, hey, we're never making a Spider-Man movie again, but you're going to get 10 seasons of like, the, like the amazing Spider-Man on HBO. I'd be like, yeah. let's fucking go, dude. Like I, yeah. I fucking prefer that. Yeah, so of course. I'm always like more over like, I don't want to say more over better, but like more over like bigger. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, yeah, I guess yeah. that's quality over or like quantity over quality. Yeah. I don't like, well, know, I mean, but, but the thing is, is these shows are the quality of the movies. So like that's, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah. They're proving that they can do yeah. the quality yeah. in this quantity. Are you yeah. saying I can have quality so. and quantity? But yeah, well, what? exactly. And I mean, oh word on the God. street is that the, each of these episodes of Falcon and the Winter Soldier cost roughly around 25 million, which is pretty fucking massive for, for a TV yeah. show. I mean, Game of Thrones is probably the only thing that's come close to that or even probably surpassed yeah. it, I would imagine. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, you know, and again, I think I think it really comes down to like story, like the storytelling prowess, like understanding who these characters are what they mean to this universe and what is the best way to tell their stories, right? Some, mm. some yeah. characters in some films or, or uh, some characters in some stories are going to be better told as a film. Some characters in some stories are going to be better served uh, uh, use, do, doing the TV show thing. Like I, I, again, I think you can have both. Like I'm not saying like, yeah. I want everything to be like TV shows from now and for my MC. No, like however you want to tell that story is, is the, and that's why I think, like, obviously we trust Kevin Feige at this point. Like, he knows the best way to tell these stories. And so that's why I think it's, yeah. like, Marvel's really in a sweet spot right now of, like, they can really kind of do whatever the fuck they want and, like, people eat yeah. it up, you know? Yeah. So it's, like, and I mean, I, I'm okay with that, you know? I feel like that is exactly it of, like, we trust Feige because he's been doing it in movie format for so long. Yep. So the fact that they can, they've accomplished what they can, have accomplished with mm-hmm. such a short format yeah. in comparison, um, to then expand that into a TV series, I think is why they are so, so far so good because mm-hmm. they have that experience of making something so concise, so good. Mm-hmm. So they, have the wherewithal to be able to pick and choose yeah. what will be the most impactful in the television format mm-hmm. like absolutely to, to drop in on top of the the basic that we already know from the movies yeah, yeah definitely yeah. definitely and it just adds that extra layer of dimensionality to the characters you know into the universe that mm-hmm. i think like it, it just works really well so um so, so yeah i'm excited to see what happens first yeah, same, dude. The same, but so the 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 first footage we ever got of this was the big game spot yeah. two years ago at the Super Bowl. Yep. we saw mm-hmm. Sam throwing the shield. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That yep. has to come next. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. He originally turned down the role of Captain America to give the shield to the museum. They fucked him. They gave it to John. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do we think? they come back to him to retake the mantle of Captain America or, or, you know, maybe or he takes the shield. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like John. in the, in the end result, like, you know, maybe he sees what the continuation of the last, you know, scene from uh, episode four is either a confrontation where he like John either leaves the shield and, and runs off or does something fucking crazy. Yeah. I, and I don't think he'll do that. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. But, or he takes it from him or the government's like, yo uh you're a pr nightmare like we're taking this shit back and then what i would love to see is i would love to see them fucking do what they did with zemo but for the shield like how do you how do you get the shield back you know how do you how do you heist the shield yeah that would be awesome. well they've done it before so that's what i'm saying oh yeah well that's why sharon (laughs) oh man we didn't even touch on the fact like why sharon is having to hide away in madripoor like yeah she stole the shield and the wings for mm-hmm. like she like she's like yeah. a fucking international criminal. That's why she has to fucking work for the power broker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like the line from Bucky basically telling Sam like, "You turn down the shield." He's like, "If I have to take the shield from like John myself, like he's like, if you don't want it, I'll I'll be fucking Captain America." Yeah. Which I thought it was good. Like he, in all of his insecurities of like if if Steve was wrong about you, then he's wrong about me mm-hmm. also still like, he's also ready to like, yeah. if I have to, I'll be fucking captain America. Yeah. Yeah. If it, <laughs> yeah. if it's that guy, 
<laughs> or me, it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah, if it's not you and it's not him, I'll fucking yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. Also, speaking of the shield, I loved at the end of that fight with the Dormilaji how she popped the shield up onto her arm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The classic Two. fucking... Yeah. Yeah, the classic, classic Stevie Rogers move. elevator scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was cool good. to see Apparently, someone else wield it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a shield and see if like I like. How does everybody just know how to do that move? It seems like physically impossible. <laughs> well, to, to be fair, well, you have to have the thing to catch it on. So. They did harbor Steve for a while in Wakanda too, so he might have taught him some tips, yeah. tips yeah, and tricks true. on shield. What, well, a thousand and one ways to use a shield. There they're master master warriors so yeah, exactly um, and it's vibranium yeah. so shout out to yeah. the one scene where zemo's talking to bucky and sam goes don't listen to him he's just gonna do his head tilt thing and zemo's already yeah. tilting his head and he like straightens it he's like no i'm not yeah. I'm, no yeah, that's, that's really really great man again the character stuff the character beats are so good yeah yeah like there's not a lot of comedy in this but when they do it it's good yeah. 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 It's for for being such a serious show, it's also got some of the best comedic moments. Yeah. They put it in the right spots. Well, yeah, and I mean yeah. at the end at the end of the day, this show is pitched as like a buddy cop comedy, like between these two guys, like something akin yeah. to like forty eight hours or you know, any of those sort of eighties, early nineties buddy cop movies. So it makes yeah. sense, you know, it's that same kind of vein. Yeah, totally. Definitely. And that's it. Yeah. The next time you the next time you hear from us, uh, Wolverine will be in the show. The finale will happen. <laughs> uh, Sharon will be the power broker. Yeah, Sharon will be the power broker. Wolverine will fight the Winter Soldier. We might and get a cameo Steve will be by, back from the dead. <laughs> we might yeah. get a cameo by Ralph Boner. Yeah, there's going to be... <laughs> Ralph Boner is going to be a part of the Thunderbolts. It's yeah, going to be crazy. Go. He go. will secretly have been <laughs> Mephisto all along. Yeah, exactly. He was the fly. Mephisto yeah. is the puppeteer of uh, Thunderbolt Ross, who hired Zemo. Oh God! I don't know. We're going. We're we're going off. Going course. To, we're going into. We're Hollow going Earth, into Hollow Earth. Hollow Earth land right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Crazy King, Town, Joel. King Kong in the MCU confirmed. <laughs> uh, Taylor, where can everybody find you on the internet? Oh man, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Taylor Salen. Beautiful, Lauren. I am at underscore Miss Pixie underscore on the Instagrams and the clubhouse. Nice. Sick. You know me. I'm the LA nerd. I'm everywhere on the internet, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Banned from Facebook for a while, but you know, <laughs> you weren't, you probably weren't following me on Facebook anyway. Uh, <laughs> like I said, the next time you hear from us, it'll be the finale, baby. Aye. It'll probably be the same thing where I'm like, yeah, let's, I guess we can talk about episode five, but I just want to talk about episode six. Yeah. <laughs> um, Keep it short and sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll try. Yeah. But until then, later, nerds. Peace. Bye.